Hello creators. This is a quick short tutorial on what we did in our last class. Um, I went over a couple of basic things in audition and one of them was if you are in audition Adobe audition and all of a sudden the user interface looks completely foreign or you can't find your track or why is that panel there that never looked like that before. Uh, just remember this tip go up into window up here and go into workspace. It's the very first menu item. And then there's all kinds of choices there, but we are using radio production or we have from the beginning. So make sure that that's checked. And if you check radio production, more than likely your user interface that you're comfortable with and um, uh, know how to use really well is that selection. So that'll get you back to where you need to be. Common problem happened to me a million times. So then uh, when before class started, I had my handheld, my, uh, let's see. A little show and tell here. I had my handheld and I was using the XY array microphones very simply and I just held it in front of me. We were in O'Leary 140. As you know, there's an HVA system up there. It sounds like the Death Star and Star Wars. Um, <clears throat> and I wanted to use that opportunity to show you how to use the denoise function or noise reduction in general in Adobe Audition. So here's the file that I came up with. Testing, one, two, three, check, one, two, three. Test, one, two, three, check, one, two, three. Speaking in a normal voice using the external XY array mics on the Zoom H6. Check one, two. So you really should have headphones on for this, and then you can more clearly hear the offending noise. It's a very low frequency. It's kind of a steady state uh, frequency, which is um, probably the easiest kind to get rid of. When it's transient noises or traffic or the wind, it's very, very difficult to noise reduce those offending noises. So the important thing to know here, too, is whenever you record anything, you always want to get room tone. You always want to get like 10 full seconds of complete silence. And it really isn't because there's always tone in a room and there's always something. We live in a an age where there's electronic everything everywhere all the time so uh, you just try to be as quiet as you can try not to tap the table try not to speak uh, doors closing try to get just the ambient noise in the room for about a full 10 seconds it goes a long way that when you you know when you dump the file into adobe audition it goes a long way for the program to work the more uh, over three seconds is usually the norm. Under three seconds, these programs tend not to be able to capture the frequencies to eliminate. So here we are. We got this noise right here. And I'm going to select that little section there and just uh, bring your eyes down to this, uh, blue, this arrow here, this loop playback function. And if I click it off, it turns white. If I click it on, it turns blue. So now it is on. So now when I hit the space bar and the playhead moves, it's just going to loop. And this can be useful because now I'm going to go into um, the effects rack. I'm on this track. I'm in the effects rack. It's track effects. It's going to impact the entire track. And I'm going to go into slot number one and I'm going to go to noise reduction and restoration. And the first thing I'm going to try is the very top one, which is D noise. It's a default effect. Let's see what happens. And it does a really good job. It has suppressed that low frequency rumble hum in a very good way. So that's one way to do it. Now note that I can turn this effect on and off and listen to it in real time. Here we go. It's off. The noise is prominent again. I'm going to switch it off. And the noise is going away. And the, the good thing about having this loop and use this effect, you can 
let it loop and turn it on and off and hear how well it's working or how well it's not working or make adjustments here in these, some of these granular settings. In this case, I don't have to do a thing. Beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. So let's uh, close that down. It's still here. It still exists. I can turn it on and off here as well. Um, let's turn it off and let's try this other effect, which I'm going to go to slot number two. And I'm going to go to noise reduction and restoration. And this one I'm going to use adaptive noise reduction. This is a more sophisticated uh, effect where um, you're going to get this message. And it's going to say the selected effect may not be suitable for real-time playback as we're editing, as I'm listening back. Because it is either CPU intensive or high latency. Basically what this message, and you're going to say okay to this. Basically this message is saying... Look, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get those frequencies specifically and I'm going to dig real deep and I'm going to take out just those frequencies. Uh, I'm going to get very, very specific. So it's a more difficult task for the computer to perform. Depending on your computer, uh, it may not uh, take effect as you are playing back. So in this case, it's a very short, what is it, 30 seconds long? Uh, we're going to hear, and we do hear the effect right now. So, yeah, on and off. Now, here's something to consider. Now that we've reduced that offending noise, is it going to take out those frequencies in my voice, in my voiceover, to a point where I sound unnatural or in some significant way different? So now let's come out of there. We have this selected, and you can see that this is maroon now. That's telling you, you may not hear this in real time. It's going to take a time to render, just like when you're in a video editor and you do some very sophisticated edits or overlays or uh, effects in video, and it takes a while to render. But anyway, let's come out of here and let's... Two, three... Test, one, two, three, check, one, two, three. Listen to my voice. Speaking in a normal voice using the external XY array mics on the Zoom H6. Check, one, two. Okay, so and in class, I think we all agreed that it didn't impact my voice uh, significantly, and we liked the effect, both of them. We liked both of those effects. So we used the denoise out of the box, and we then tried adaptive noise reduction, and both worked really well. Uh, one final thing, real quick, just to remind you, when you are exporting, this is the project here, we're looking at the project, and when you want to export this as an MP3 file and send it up to Blackboard as your assignment, you go into File, real quick, Export. Multi-track mix down, entire session. Here's the important uh, dialog box right here. You want to name it, and you want to put it. Usually, typically in class, we are putting this on our flash drive. So you're going to pick your flash drive, and you're going to say save it there. And then this box here. So if you click uh, the down arrow, and you'll see there's a whole bunch of different audio file types. We want mp3, .mp3, and then you can say OK, and then go check into your flash drive and make sure it's there. Uh, I really enjoyed listening to everyone's assignment too. Um, you are doing a great job. It's just so great to hear people talking about what they love and you do it well. Uh, there's confidence there. There's uh, passion there. There's some fun um, and some really, really great interviews you did in assignment too. And bravo to all of you. So I hope that helps. I'll see you in class.